Welcome back to the Barbell Medicine Podcast. We're talking about controversies in nutrition. And now we're going to talk about real sugar versus high fructose corn syrup. So what's the controversy here? Well, people believe that, quote, real sugar is better, more health promoting, et cetera, than high fructose corn syrup. And this is uh, actually topical because in a post on Truth Social, President Donald Trump said that Coca-Cola has agreed to use real cane sugar in U.S. production of their popular soda, Coke. Why is there controversy? Well, like I've always said, and I've been saying this for years, maybe since the start of barbell medicine, it's the three C's that people are bad at. That's chemistry, critical thinking, and Coke. <laughs> I've been saying it for forever. People know this. So with chemistry, first we can take sweeteners and put them into two groups, nutritional and non-nutritional sweeteners. Not, uh, nutritional sweeteners have calories, contain energy. Non-nutritional sweeteners do not have calories or energy. Uh, so that, you know, non-nutritional sweeteners would be things like aspartame, stevia, et cetera. Uh, whereas nutritional sweeteners, there are basically three types of these. Uh, there's a monosaccharide. So there's one type of chemical that would be like fructose and glucose. Uh, there's a disaccharide. So there's two types of chemicals that are bound, bonded together. That's like sucrose, right? Uh, this would be uh, glucose and fructose bonded together. And then there's uh, polyols, like a sugar alcohol. Uh, so we'll focus now on disaccharides, right? So table sugar, sucrose, and high fructose corn syrup. Those are both disaccharides. So cane sugar, or quote, real sugar, is sugar derived from sugar cane. That's a tropical grass. It's called cane sugar instead of just sugar to differentiate it from sugar derived from other sources like sugar beets, but they're chemically the same. It's 50% fructose and 50% glucose bonded together. Now you compare that to high fructose corn syrup. This is a blend of, yep, you guessed it, fructose and glucose, but just in different proportions uh, compared to cane sugar. So it's either 42% or 55% fructose, and the rest of it is glucose. So slightly different as far as proportions, but chemically, they are the same. It's fructose and glucose together. So that's the first thing that people are generally bad at, chemistry. But there's your chemistry lesson. You can replay that, so then you could be an expert in chemistry related to cane sugar versus high fructose corn syrup. Now we'll move on to the second C, critical thinking. People say fructose is bad, and by proxy, fruit is bad. So some, but not all, or even most studies on fructose ingestion alone show that compared to glucose ingestion alone, well, fructose can increase the creation of fat in the liver. This is called hepatic de novo lipogenesis. It's also less satiating or filling and so on. And these tend to be most problematic in a calorie surplus. Now, what those studies don't tell you are two things. One, humans by and large do not consume just pure fructose or pure glucose because Table sugar is not pure glucose, and fruit is not pure fructose. Uh, and also, de novo lipogenesis, that's a relatively minor pathway for fructose metabolism overall. So two caveat, important caveats there for this, quote, external validity that you talked about earlier. And so then people will say, well, look, high fructose corn syrup is bad because of the excess fructose compared to sucrose. However, the data does not show this. When you look at actual data on humans eating you know, the same amount of calories, but they're getting some of that from high fructose corn syrup versus sucrose. Again, we're talking about things that are chemically the same, just slightly different proportions. There is no difference in outcomes with respect to weight gain, with respect to uh, lipid levels, with respect to fasting blood sugars, with respect to blood pressure, go on and on down the list, insulin sensitivity, whatever. They are the same. And so if you were good at critical thinking, you would say, well, look, I had this hypothesis that because ingesting large amounts of pure fructose, especially in a calorie surplus, may be deleterious to human health. And your prediction was, well, because high fructose corn syrup has more fructose in it, that's going to cause unwanted outcome, whether it's weight gain, increases in blood pressure, increases in atherogenic lipoprotein levels. You would have to then go to the, the research and say, well, show me the data. Does this actually play out? And then you look at the data and you're like, oh, oh crap, it doesn't. Well, I guess I have to reject my hypothesis or otherwise modify it to, to fit this information. Yeah, fully agree. It's been frustrating to watch all this play out uh, being touted uh, by the HHS, I think, as a win that they're wanting to switch U.S. Coke from that from, uh, you know, to, to real quote unquote cane sugar as this kind of naturalistic sort of sort of thing that they're uh, pursuing. I mean, if you look at historically rates of diabetes in Mexico have consistently been higher than rates of diabetes in the U.S. If you wanted to take a very oversimplistic view on this, you're like, well, uh, if if this were such a you know strong driver of our diabetes rates in the U.S., well, 
what about the place where <laughs> that they do sometimes use a bit more of the the cane sugar and things like that um so i i wish that we were uh targeting things similar to our conversation in the first question about prioritizing for example things like dietary fat uh, dietary fiber and the fat composition in our diet and things like that rather than um as uh, our friend dr nadilski recently said he used one of my favorite commonly used phrases in medicine rearranging deck chairs on the titanic um meaning it is uh just doing something that is ultimately going to be futile um and and it's coming from a place that is not reflective of good critical thinking because you could have conversations with these folks and say you know, I've actually sometimes wanted to do something like this to say, based on your hypothesis of the case or based on your understanding, could you describe to me the design of a study that would test this? And they would probably describe a study that probably something like it has been done. And if you showed that to them <laughs> and that its results went in the opposite direction of what they expected, then what happens? And we know what happens in people's brains. This is not, I'm not attacking anyone in particular here, but this is just what people do when they're tightly wedded to an idea or a hypothesis or a belief is that they'll immediately start scrutinizing and trying to find reasons to dismiss the evidence that they don't like. And so ultimately another potentially futile endeavor, but one that would be entertaining nonetheless, I think. <laughs> yeah. And the final C that people are bad at, and again, I've always said this, always. Always. Coke. Uh, Coke. People are bad at Coke. Okay. And beca because this claim is that, well, just look at Mexican Coke and, and, and compared it to the, the Coke that sold, Coca-Cola that sold in the United States because Mexican Coke, uh, you know, ha they use cane sugar and not high fructose corn syrup. And so, okay, one, in Mexico, yeah, the, the, generally the rates of type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome are higher than the United States. So, yeah. all right, so that's strike that's a one. problem. Yeah, yeah strike, strike two, people, that, again, they, they claim that Mexican Coke, well, it tastes better and it's better for you because they use cane sugar uh, instead of high fructose corn syrup. But, well, that's not true either because Coke in Mexico has used high fructose corn syrup for more than over the last 10 years. Like they've been using it for over a decade. Uh, and they're like, well, but it tastes better. I'm like, okay, well, it has a little bit more sodium in it and it has more caffeine and more proportionally are sold in bottles that affect the taste. And there's actually like a whole – a uh, separate scale of like sweetness. I think it's called the Brix scale, B-R-I-X. And it has to do with like how sweet the thing is. And they have to adjust the amount of sweetener in the, the product based on what vessel it's being mm, sold in and the type of sweetener that they use. I think they also put sucralose in Mexican Coke uh, as well. Uh, mm. So anyway, more stuff going on here. But again, like I've always said, historically, <laughs> people are bad at the three C's, which yeah. is chemis chemistry, crit critical thinking, and Coke. So uh, consensus here. I don't want people to get it twisted and say that we're telling you that high fructose corn syrup is uniquely health promoting. We are certainly not saying that. What we are saying is that it's no worse for you than cane sugar if consumed in the same amounts. And we have no data to suggest that people consume more high fructose corn syrup in a similar food than they would regular sugar. They're both bad, to be clear. Generally speaking, I wouldn't want people to eat a diet that has a lot of added sugar from either of them. Uh, I would instead prefer that people consume those same foods with non-nutritive sweeteners if I could make a small change, uh, meaning that they're you know, it's sweetened with an artificial sweetener or a uh, natural sweetener like stevia or monk fruit, whatever, than having added calories from cane sugar or high fructose corn syrup. But overall, your dietary pattern probably shouldn't be that sweet with respect to either added sugar or non-nutritive sweeteners either. So it's not that like High fructose corn syrups, we're recommending it. 10 out of 10, you should consume it. We're like, well, maybe your diet shouldn't have either in them. Yeah, I recall the first time I heard you say that I did that final idea that like overall your diet probably shouldn't be super sweet all the time. And I thought that that was a reasonable kind of uh, take home suggestion for people that they might not have thought of in that way. Instead of micromanaging all these things, it's like if, if you're constantly having sweet things all day, there's probably a problem here that we ought to address. Yeah, di broader dietary pattern can be changed. But yeah, we're not saying high fructose corn syrup is uniquely healthy or that you should replace all of your cane sugar with high fructose corn syrup. We're just saying that replacing high fructose corn syrup with cane sugar is going to do nothing. Literally nothing. Pretty con literally nothing, uh, except for waste a bunch of resources, time, attention, et cetera. Yep. And it's like all we're doing is placating people who, who probably shouldn't have confident opinions on, on this thing. And they're like, look at what we're doing policy-wise. Yeah, real food, real sugar. It's like, eh. That seems to be a fallacy, and yeah. maybe, maybe we shouldn't be asking for that. Yep, agree. All right.